Hello everyone, welcome back to my plant room. Um, I feel like I've been working almost every single day and so I'm just coming in here. Thought I'd do a live. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do as far as showing you guys stuff, but just kind of looking in my plant room, seeing if there's anything I need to do today. Oh, it's a little bit dry there, so I may need to get some water in there. Um, <clears throat> so, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and spray this here because it looks like it's that fern. I, I don't know if anybody else has problems with certain ferns. Um, this is a, oh gosh, I always forget the name. I think this is like a blue star fern or something like that. This one right here. And it's been overall pretty easy. And I think this is like a button nose fern. Uh, ferns and this was a heart fern but um yeah it's it's hanging on but not barely there um i just wanted to come and do a few plant chores with you guys and kind of show you some things around the way um this is kind of a cool one i got a shipment from equigenera and um this is called an anthurium it's kind of a pretty one it's anthurium Angla Markenum. That's different. Um, different name there. But it's really pretty. I really like it. And then I have my um, Red Anderson that I need to repot because it's looking, and I'm actually going to probably put this on a moss pole because it's not looking the happiest. I don't like what I'm seeing there. So I am going to probably repot my Red Anderson. It doesn't look the happiest. So I'm going to do that. What else can I show you guys? Um, this is a global green, and it's crazy because once I put it in the terrarium, it's just, that's a huge, it just is really happy. Huge, huge leaves. There's my Florida ghost right there. And then I've got my Linami, which oh, definitely needs some water. I probably should bring my water in here. So I don't know if you guys use, um, use rainwater or any kind of, um, sorry, I'm backing up here to get some of my Ooh, look what a pretty look at that look at that sunset oh you know we live in the country and sometimes the country sunsets are just the most spectacular isn't that pretty just the most spectacular sunsets ever which um let me go ahead and water this and i'm just kind of taking you guys along sorry if the camera's I'm kind of spilling it everywhere just kind of taking you guys along. I almost feel like I need some kind of like, I don't know, camera support. You know, it's just me today doing this. So I've got a El Choco right here. They got some spider mites and I'm trying to kind of treat that and do, let us do its thing. Um, I've got a um, ring of fire here. It's absolutely beautiful. I love it. I think that um, the ring of fire is one of those ones that kind of you wait till you see a leaf like that and you're like oh wow that's absolutely why you get a ring of fire because it's absolutely beautiful um so just showing you around some of the plants there's a looking glass begonia that thing's so easy to propagate there is a beachy eye um, got a forgetty eye up there i turned off the plant lights they were on earlier but i decided it got really hot in here um i've got a florida beauty which i love this one here it had a really pretty leaf when i first got it but um then it died the leaf that or the leaf was old and so it did its thing but um this one's i think the next one hopefully that's okay why does that look it almost looks like that's almost like a bleached out which maybe I need to move this. I might do that. Sorry, I'm just talking. You guys are really <clears throat> getting the real time here for me, from me. Um, you can see there, it almost looks like that leaf is like bleached out. What do you guys think? Uh, but it's pretty, it's still pretty. But that's really what I'm looking for for the Florida uh, beauty. That's absolutely beautiful. And that's what this should look like. So I'm not really sure. There's one actually over there that looks okay. But I may need to, yeah, I'm gonna just take this away and put it down here and figure out what I'm going to do with that. Um, there's a Birkins that I had outdoors, a Vildenden Birkins. And the Birkins, it's a really easy, easy, easy plant to take care of. And the more light it gets, obviously you're going to get leaves like that. Um, it was a big deal for a while. Uh, I think, though, then it kind of fell off for a little bit. But I really, really think it's probably one of the easiest 
plants that gives you the wow factor that you just don't expect. And so I propagated very easily off of this as well. I mean, you can neglect this thing and it still will look really pretty. I just brought this in from the outside. Um, yes, Red Fury, um, tell us more about the Birkins, please. Um, yeah, get one. <laughs> Red Fury, get one, get one. So I just use, you really could probably use just about anything. Let me see what, I don't even know what I used in this. I think I just used probably some regular soil like just regular you know I like my own aeroid mix which some plants obviously don't go well with that but I just do I mean I you could use I you could go if you have like a plant store and they have a mix um personally what I do for my soil um the aeroid soil that I do it's cocoa chips I do pumice I or I try to stay away from uh, perlite so I try to do the pumice instead and then I do um um, sometimes I'll do worm castings, I'll do, um, peat moss, which I'm trying to get away from that as well, and do kind of more like a cocoa choir, and then also, um, I do orchid bark, so that's kind of what my mix is, and, um, that's what I go with, but, you know, depending on what the plant is, um, I may have to change that up a little bit, I need to probably, um, I think I need to water some of this stuff here, um, yeah, let me go back over here. Oh, you guys know any like camera things that you can, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of water in that stratum in there. I'm not giving it milk, I promise. Um, it's, we keep our jugs. I actually like the Costco jugs. I'm gonna just kind of walk backwards. And you guys see that, that sunset again? Yeah, you're welcome, you're welcome. Um, let me. I don't think I have any more. You know what? I'm going to go ahead. And I try to get rainwater. Let's show you guys how beautiful that sun sunset is. And I'm kind of doing this one-handed here. Oh. So sorry if it's kind of everywhere. But I thought I'd bring you guys along with my, you can see, for my plant chores. I love this crane humidifier. It's really dirty in there, but I, I need to get something up because my plants are needing some hum humidity. I can tell they're kind of annoyed at me. So there we go. I'll probably put some more in later, but I love these crane humidifiers. Um, I think they're amazing. Um, this was a Weber Bowery that I got from Equigenera, and thank you. Yes, I, I um, sometimes it's it's one of those things where you know you don't even you just you appreciate the view when it happens, but sometimes life just almost passes by and you don't see the view. So it's kind of nice when it looks it just shines through the window, or you can see it through the window. I can't even I feel like I can't even talk, but when you can see it through the window and you can see how beautiful, and it's kind of a nice backdrop to my plant room. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of, um, yes, I agree. I like, yeah, I'm going to stand back just a little bit. It does look nice, doesn't it? That's, that is a view. That is definitely, definitely a view. They're all, everything's all kind of messy right now. Um, we are going to be building another shelf, but, um, always chores to do in the plant room. Never a dull moment in the plant room. Always doing something, always trying to learn more about my plants and always trying to give it, um, more care and love that's in, in, individualized to each and every single plant. So that's kind of what we've been trying to do. And, um, yeah, I love, I love all the very, I really like different shapes and colors I have. And sometimes it's funny. We'll have like an older leaf that's falling off. We sometimes will keep that just because it's like, Oh, you know what? It looks, I don't know if we just keep it off, we let it fall off. So, well, thank you. That's very kind of you, Red Fury. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, definitely kind words. I appreciate that. Uh, so let's see what else I've got. So um, down here in kind of my mess that I have, um, I actually split a calathea, which it, um, a white fusion calathea, and there I put them in Ziploc bags. So they're doing okay so far. So that was one project I was working on. Um, these are kind of like spider mite problem ones over here. Um, this one is a Stratera, I think, oh my gosh, not Stratera, what is the, um, bit, Batata, Stratera, oh my goodness, Calathea Batata, and it's, it's really, the crazy thing about it is, it, 
I don't want to say that it's not an easy Eclathia, but I had to chop all of this off at some point and then it came and I left it in a Ziploc bag forever. And then I took it out probably in the last maybe four months or something like that. And it's been doing great. It's doing pretty good. But then I just happened to notice, as you know, um, the Calatheas, they have a tendency to um, get spider mites. And so I did notice a few and I was like, oh, dang it. So I pulled it away from the rest. And I probably should pull it away a little bit more than that. But um, this is kind of like my problem, children down here. <laughs> Sounds terrible. But, um, but this is... This is also one that is actually an, a hybrid of a Frigidii and a Bessier. And it also has one leaf that has spider mites, so I kind of put that down um, and working on that. It's actually already been treated, but um, I'm still kind of watching it really closely. This is a type of a palm. Let me show you guys this. Let me move this over here. This is a type of palm and oh gosh i can't think of my brain is just so tired tonight but um if you guys know the name of this i feel like it's aduli or something like that it's really cool it almost looks like a feather um i had it outside and i was kind of neglecting it a bit but i'm definitely bringing it in trying to give it the love that it needs and then i've got an allocation of quilted dreams um this was super root bound and so i recently repotted this and it already looks a lot happier a lot of times you can know that your um, plants are root bound or if you're having issues with the leaves the alocasia leaves curling up like that that's how you can know that you need to repot and then um yeah so let's see i'm just kind of checking kind of doing the things i do i'll go to each pot individually and i'll check to see oh that that orchid back there really needs probably something um if you guys can think of any kind of like um things where you can like be able to carry your camera around i feel like when i'm trying to do chores it'd be nice there's my felix set i'm a little worried about i got a shipment from equigenera so i don't know we'll see it's kind of crisping on the end there i am a little bit worried so i don't know i don't know i've lost two felixes from their shipments and this is actually a replacement Felix, and I'm just concerned it's going to happen again. So, uh, I don't know. This time I'm trying the um, stratum to see if this this works a little bit better. I've tried everything from sphagnum moss. So, I don't know. I don't know what the right combination is going to be here for this, but I'm really hoping that it just makes it. And then what I did is I have another, I actually kind of tried to propagate from it um already because this was one area that kind of looked like it was already having problems but it's in there so we'll see if anything comes from that i don't think it will this was also another shipment um so it's doing okay this papillaminum it's very beautiful these things are super expensive um and we got a crazy deal on it so we're super happy about that uh, sometimes the plant tours can be a little bit overwhelming and you can kind of feel like it's just a lot to do, especially when you're tired and you're busy. And I saw something from um, Tanner, the plant guy, that talk, who, he talked about how, you know, plants really should not be, it shouldn't stress you out. It shouldn't be something that um, makes you feel like, you know, like you've got too much to do or it should be a therapy for you. It should be a happy thing for you. And that's what my plants have been. Sometimes, you know what, I'll, I'll walk away from my plant room and some of them get neglected. And that's just what happens, you know. Some of them even die. That's happened. So, you know, I do the best that I can. And I say that, you know, when you're trying to do the best that you can, sometimes it's not going to be perfect. And that's okay. I definitely think that um, my plant journey has come a long way. And I've kind of, not that I've gone on a plant ban. I don't really believe that there's really such a thing i think there's almost a better word for it that i could f figure out but i'll think about what it is but people say plant ban and you kind of get what they say because they feel like they're almost like addicted to getting plants um but sometimes it's just knowing that hey you know these plants were here for me to help me in my time of need or when i was feeling stressed and when it gets to a point where you know if you love your plants and you're like hey this feels really good and they're helping me through hard times then that's good but if you get to a point where you start feeling like okay wait a minute they help me but maybe it's time for me to either cut back or kind of stop a little bit you don't even have a, have to call it a plant ban you can just say hey you know what it's time for me i i'm i have the love and what i need from these plants and um i'm gonna take care of the ones that i have 
and I might have to get rid of some of them that I have, but I'm kind of at that weird stage where I feel like I was, um, there was a time where I was going through a really, really difficult time, and the plants, obviously, you can tell it was probably really difficult. The plants really helped a lot, and so that's probably why I have so many, because <laughs> it really does make me feel, um, I don't know, it is therapy for me. So I definitely say that you know, it's it's one of those things where you kind of decide when it's too much and that's okay. Now I'm rambling. So anyways, you guys probably don't want to hear about that kind of nonsense. Um, what else can I show you guys? Uh, this is a really cool, this is actually called like cardboard plant or something like that. Um, it's kind of a cool, it actually looks a little bit like cardboard. It kind of feels like that too. And then what I've got back here, this thing, this is a Hoya that I feel like is taking forever to grow, but that's okay. Hoyas do that. Um, I probably should put this down here. It's the Hoya Sunrise. I've got that as a cutting. And I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit. I probably should put this. I don't know. It has grown, believe it or not. I might put this in some soil. Um, just looking at here. Sorry if I'm being a little bit, if I stop talking. I mean, it's probably just me assessing my plant so yeah if you guys can think of any kind of like there's a dock block back there if you guys can think of any kind of like um i don't even know what kind of tools there are like what kind of phone holders there are out there but it'd be kind of nice to be able to always carry you guys along there's a nigro lam laminum so thank you jessica um thank you and i'm sorry i, I missed some comments so let me see here um not wild i love the big leaves me too i love i love seeing them grow that's a forgetty eye that's gotten a lot bigger um and then i've got the bessier that's just always a wow it that makes it i mean it looks a lot smaller than it is but when you come up here it's a huge leaf i think some of the other um, plants are kind of making it look a little bit off as far as the size but it's huge and then the patriciae which is always amazing and then i've got a bunch of stuff over there and um, the Lainami is always just like a crazy, well, this happened recently because I think we sprayed something like a foliage spray. I'm not going to do that again because it did some weird thing to the leaf. So, but the Lainami is definitely, uh, I mean, it's a showstopper. And then, um, the chimp chimpanies, which is, um, it's a Syngonian chimpanies is pretty amazing too. Um, there is a new one that out that's like, and it doesn't take very much care at all. I mean, I probably need to move it, but it's on a huge moss pole. And sometimes I even forget to water it. And it's just amazing how how big the chim chimpanzee is. And so I didn't, it doesn't even look like a syngonium, which is the crazy thing, but it is. So it's kind of crazy. So um, let's see here, Steve Reeves. Um, I like that, okay. I'm not sure which one, but thank you. And amazing, Jessica, thank you. Yes, I definitely, um, <laughs> So what are we selling today? Uh, nothing. <laughs> Not selling anything. I'm uh, just kind of going around the room and just for the heck of it, I'm just in here and I figure I'll show you guys everything. So um, I don't have any energy right now to sell anything. So um, let's see here. And our Anthurium's slow growers. I just got my first one. Um, tiny ceiling. So that's a great question, not wild. Um, the the anthemes are weird because they will take forever. And then all of a sudden within literally, literally like, I mean, a day's time, you will get the biggest leaf. It is the craziest thing about anthemes and it will just almost take you by surprise. You almost feel like it's like it's an animal <laughs> that's growing right in front of your eyes. And it's just kind of crazy. It's a really crazy thing that anthemes do. Um, and then they'll just, like this is um, a leaf that just, you can also see one right there that looks like it's looking at the sunset, which you can kind of st see the sunset still happening. But, um, but yeah, it's really funny because um, anthuriums will just shoot up some crazy leaves. This one I accidentally got a little bit of water on, but this did this. I mean, it was a really tiny plant. I think it was probably the size of like that papilaminum, and then it went crazy. I mean, my hand, you can kind of see. And then the forgetii. I will tell you if there are seeds, like if you've pollinated um, and it's got a inflorescence, so you can see either if it's pollinating or if you pollinated it with another plant or whatnot, or if it has an influence, a lot of times that will kind of cause issues on the plant. That's most flowers in general and most plants in general when it's flowering, that does take a lot of energy. Um, so this is um, 
that is a lot of times it takes a lot of energy from the plants so that will slow the growth a lot of times uh, the frigidity eye has been through a lot <laughs> it's been through a lot but it's actually you can see some babies up there from the bessie and frigidity eye this is what my husband he actually hybridized some of those i do probably need to get up here and water because i think yeah they're getting a little bit dry there so um let's see what other comments um yeah so the, to answer your question they can be for instance this is a regale stump and sometimes certain things will activate i actually think i've got something growing about right there but this this had a leaf forever and it was huge it was a massive leaf and then once it was done this has been a stump and it's still alive it's been a stump forever it feels like and i have two and i can um, definitely you can see over here which hopefully that one's doing okay because I have not been even looking at it and well it's not dry it's definitely got some green so yeah um, so that's yeah you'll get leaves like that though once it's happy and you got an aeroid mix and you got it in, in some light um, once a leaf gets growing you'll have a crazy huge size leaf in no time so um, let's see here you're funny Steve that's funny um thank thank you i appreciate you saying that yeah i i definitely i i do feel like sometimes i need to get rid of some of them <laughs> um because but i don't know which one's in here i have a whole like plant hospital okay i'm gonna show you guys my messiness over here so obviously this is a little thing on the door that just like a shoe holder thing that i just happen to put like plant planty type stuff but i'm gonna show you guys the messiness you'll see um milk jugs everywhere because we use rainwater in those and we use a lot of other stuff for our water so they're just coming out but i'm gonna show you guys my messiness that is the plant hospital over there those are ones that i do sometimes try to sell although i'm a weirdo i have a really hard time selling plants i don't know what it is about that i just feel like i try so hard to get them to to where they are and then when it comes time to like hey maybe i could sell this i don't i don't know and it's maybe it's really bad i shouldn't probably be like that but i just i don't know it's just hard to like think that like you know you you watch something for like a year and then all of a sudden you're gonna sell it for ten dollars like to me i just i don't know i don't know if any of you guys are like that you just feel like man when you see an expensive plant it's kind of understandable especially if someone put a lot of love and care into it and that's why sometimes it's hard for me there's many many plants in here that um like for instance, these hybrids that with the great, um, I guess you could say, I was planning on selling these, but I just, I can't, I don't know. It's so bad. I like looking at them. They're so cute. I don't, I don't know. So, but yeah. And then let's see here. Not wild to, uh, not wild. You say you got, mine is a little like the size of a penny. Oh yeah. And so make sure you give it really good humidity, depending on what kind of anthurium it is. Um, if it's a queen and it was shipped in a small, uh, that one can be kind of a little bit, it's just, queens are just, when you try to, um, when you get them shipped, a lot of times they will be just not happy. I've got actually one that I probably need to spray in there soon. This was a shipment and believe it or not, this had a whole leaf and everything like that. Uh, it was just, it's very frustrating because you can imagine like having a huge anthurium and then just, just down to the stump. And I've actually rehabbed several and that's another one. Oh, well, that's actually uh, Lutheri, which I don't know if this one's going to survive, but we'll see. I don't think it is. But then here is another queen in here that's somewhere in there. I think there's a stump. I might need to open that up and just make sure it's doing okay. Um... I don't know about this one. This one had the weirdest thing. It had um, a, like you can literally see this little right here. Sorry, I've been working in dirt, so my hands are, my fingers are gonna be um, dirty, but you can see this right here. I don't know, that just doesn't look right to me. Um, and there's there were so many roots from it though. So I'm just kind of watching this. I don't know. I, I This one's got some an end that kind of looks a little concerning to me. Um, and I just don't think that that one tiny little area for how much root it had, I, you never know though, who knows, maybe it will do just fine. Look at that, isn't that pretty? I think this is an Anthurium Magnificum Silver. I'm really impressed with the Anthurium Magnificums, and this is kind of interesting because this is a lot more like narrow shaped, but it's really pretty. That was a shipment, and it was super, super easy um, to transition. It's been great. It's been very happy. And so, yeah, Steve Reeves, yes, it's like children can't get rid of them. That's funny. Yes, I know, isn't it? That's the craziest thing about it is it's just, oh, 
I don't know. It, it's just one of those things. I, I'm right there with you guys. Um, Jessica, me too. So you guys all agree. <laughs> you guys are the same. So, But share with us. I do. You know what's funny? So um, I actually am a professor. And I just started teaching at a university here in Missouri. And they have, it's my office when I, I'm, I'm, when I walk down, I'm still new to this university. And when I walk down to my office, there's, they, there's this one area where I guess it's like an office with an office that they have a great window and they have plants everywhere. And I want to go, I've been thinking about bringing them plants. It's kind of funny because one time I stopped, I didn't even know who they were, but, and I don't usually talk to people. I really, I'm not a big, like talk to strangers, which it's kind of funny because I'm on here with you guys, but I, I want to surprise them with some plants and I feel like they would give it the love. And honestly, I wouldn't even care about selling. I would, I would just, so I think I'm going to do that. And, and I have office hours tomorrow. So I think I'm going to do that. So yes, but share with others. And then, um, not wild says, I have no idea what it's going to look like big it was sold as a dark crystal oh that's that'd be interesting to see i bet you that's gonna be pretty so well you'll have to yeah that's i bet you that's gonna be really nice so and then yeah share with us uh, it's different with here on us i agree i think that um plant people you know i would gladly if i knew i almost feel like the times that i have sold like to locals locals that sounds funny but when i've sold to local people um i almost i'm like i need to get a, a background a plant background on you a resume but it's not fair to think like that because here's the thing we all learn at some point and you know i think when someone's trying whether you know i've killed tons of plants and and i think when we're trying i think yeah, some people do get a little bit ambitious when they start with but hey you know what i have too and i think that's perfectly fine I think wherever you're at in your plant journey, if you want to try a ch more challenging plant, I more power to you. I think that's that's amazing. So, and then I saw something with leaves. Don't know what that that it was called. Um, I'm not sure which one. Um, I am in Missouri. Actually, we were going to move to North Carolina, so that's kind of we think that North Carolina is pretty amazing. But yeah, we're in Missouri. And then um, I almost killed my strawberry shake cutting. Oh, good. You didn't. That's all oh, that, that I would have been freaking out. This I'll show you my strawberry shake. It did. Um, I was a little bit worried about it. I think that's good. I'm, I could feel your pain if you started having or that feeling of like you're going to lose it. But then it's here's one that started really small. And I was a little bit worried about it at first. But um, yeah, the, the strawberry shakes definitely I, I feel you on that one because that's it is kind of scary. It is kind of an ex, it's expensive. I got a really good deal on this one, though. It was like 125, I think. Um, of course, I think that it is coming down, so I'm glad that you were able to, um, you were able to save it. So that's good. And then um, I was on, it was on a t tall moss pole. Oh, do you mean in here somewhere? I don't know where. Oh, let me see. I'm not really sure. I'm not sure if you were meaning like a plant that I had on a moss pole somewhere, or the chimpanzees over here. This one was. Um, yeah, we were going to move to, I think, the Raleigh area is where, but then COVID happened, and we ended up staying in Missouri, so, um, and it's just, like, work, um, I stayed here, because I had a job out there, and then, um, there was, uh, when COVID hit, things kind of changed, and then we kind of changed our mind, and I had already had a job out there, so I ended up, kind of, I don't want to say like transferring, but I went ahead and took the job here, the one that they had, and it's actually in a, they just had one in the state of Missouri, so we ended up moving somewhere that we did not plan on moving, so that's what ended up happening, but we were looking forward to North Carolina, and then let's see here, I think it's this one here that you're talking about, the chimpanzees or chimpanzees, um, it's a really beautiful. It's just very, very pretty. And it's not anything like, I'm not a huge Syngonium person fan, but there's some pretty cool Syngoniums that don't look like Syngoniums. Although I will tell you, I have a Syngonium outside right now that it's the Carnival Syngonium and it's so cool. The leaves are so amazing. They're so, so amazing. I love them. Um, not while it first it dropped its lead, then its stem. Now it's in a good, good. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, they can be. I feel like the queen is too. The queen is super dramatic every time. I this so this one right here. 
this was down the stumps that I was showing you guys um when I got this shipped this was nothing it was like it, well it had a leaf and the leaf was terrible because it had like spider mite infestation and then um I just rehabbed it and then it went down all the way to like a stump just like what I showed you guys and then maybe like a year and a half later we've got a leaf so that's and this was a new leaf too but it got weird so but yeah that's queens are super i feel like no matter what you do they they're like that a lot but then they come back strong so i'm really i really like i really like the queens it's always kind of, it's kind of a sentimental one because i lost a queen um it was a little queen actually and that was really disappointing because it was my first queen but I did not give up. So, and then I have one here. So that's good. Um, let's see here. And yeah, so that's, that's the one I think that you're talking about. And yes, I forget to water this one. In fact, let me get my glasses on. Cause I, I don't, um, let me see here real quick. I probably should take you guys along. I try to and this is a lot but i try to kind of feel all of the soil that does need watering i try to feel the soil on every one of my plants that sounds weird but like oh yeah these all need watering back here this one needs a this needs a light back here too so i need to water those but um yeah so i love it i think it's it's very beautiful i need to water it's it's um syngonium chimpanese and they there's like a new one that's out that's actually um, variegated and it's really cool which it's like it's it's the price is stupid <laughs> how expensive but at the same time like what I said you know people do grow them I'm gonna go ahead and water with you guys once, once again I promise this is not milk so I'm just watering 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 and then I'm gonna go ahead this is a syngonium batic, batic sorry guys if this is and then I'm gonna go ahead and water this one too this one I've kind of been neglecting for some time. Sorry, the camera's probably everywhere. And um, I try to come into my plant room almost on a daily basis. And, you know, I don't, I'm usually pretty good with like trying to be able to see which plants need a little bit of water. I know this one, I felt this earlier. Oh, there we go, water everywhere. Sorry, trying to do this with one hand. And I just, I really go through everything and just kind of try to feel um, the soil. And I know that seems like kind of probably a little bit overkill to do that, but I just, I don't have a watering schedule. I, maybe I should, I don't know, but I don't. And so I just like to kind of read the plant and look at the plant and see. And I have a, I have a Rex begonia back there, a tiger begonia. It's kind of been back there. Yeah, so, um, yeah, you'll have to, let me, I don't know if I can type on here, but it's, yeah, Syngonium chimpanese, I think is how you say it. So, and let's see here. Um, yeah, so Syngonium chimpanese is what that one is. And I think it's like C, oh, there you go. You got it. Yep, that's exactly how you spell it too, I think. Yep, you're right. That's exactly right. Yeah, I, I love, I love it too. It's been really easy, which I've probably been, because it's so easy, I've been neglecting it. But honestly, this is probably one of my easier plants that just like grow like crazy. I have a huge Florida green, another one. I don't know if you guys are into it. Sometimes certain plants, some of the philodendrons can be super like gangly looking. But I have a Florida green that's probably about eight foot tall, but it's wrapped around a moss pole and it kind of looks like an art, a piece of art. Um, so that one's pretty crazy and it takes very little care, but, um, but yeah, so, and then, um, and I think if you look up there, Steve, um, you, you can see, I think somebody or somebody put it down there. So yeah, so it's chimpanese, C H I P A N S E. I probably didn't spell that right, but someone just wrote it down. So if you look up on there, yeah, it's um C H it's like chia and then pence. So C H I A P E N S E. And that is exactly right, not wild. And then what is the name? What is the Christina says, what is the lane of the that big guy? Um oh the this one right here is the Linami. Sorry I'm catching up on I probably should be watching the comments a little bit more, but that is a Linami, that's the Chia Pence, that's a Pothos and a Golden Croc, or not a Golden Croc, a Golden Pothos, or not Golden Pothos, um, oh my gosh, 
a golden, a philodendron golden, I think is what that's called in that one. I really like the neon green stuff. And then I've got the bigger ones. That's the Bessier. That's huge. That's the Patricia, which is huge. I've got a um, lipstick plant that is a black pagoda lipstick plant. I really thought that this one, I've had this one forever. Um, I thought this one was going to have the actual traditional like lipstick plant look that you think of, but it actually comes out with, and I don't know, you can see it comes out instead of like lipstick, it's got like little green, not so spectacular flowers, but that's okay because look at those leaves. It's got some dust on there, but they're pretty cool. And then even on the backside, even cooler. So, and this is, this likes highlight. It's, it's a big one. It took forever to grow and then I put it in light and then it went crazy. So, and then the Dubia is on my wish list. They're so pricey though. Yeah, yeah you know, I, it is, it is. They are, and I have it kind of tucked back there they which is so weird i don't know why they're so pricey because they're so easy to grow and, and maybe not enough people are growing them so i don't really understand there's some plants that i just don't get why are you know and, and i mean i understand as a person like i said earlier that like you know you don't want to sell your plant but i don't think most people are like that i, I think it's just the market value and things like that but talking about speaking about a an expensive plant this is a polypoides a philodendron polypoides and it's i mean it used to be i feel like in the last two years and you guys can correct me if i'm wrong i think it was over a thousand dollars which I didn't understand it. I like it. I do like it, but I didn't understand the over a thousand dollars. And I found it for, I think I got this one for 300, but it's, it's kind of a, uh, my husband looked at it and he was like, why? I don't understand, but I like it. I really like it. I think it's fun, but it grows crazy. So I don't understand. I don't know. I always think the ones that are more expensive are either obviously not, you know, there's not a lot of sellers that are, are obviously propagating, but the ones that propagate fast is always a little bit confusing to me because um, they're not, this is not a hard one to take care of. It's not, um, I can propagate probably already from this. I just don't, I don't know. Maybe I, I, I don't know. Who knows? But, um, but yeah, so the Dubia definitely, that's a, a good one. And then let's see here. Um, Steve, if, I think if you look earlier and I, I can't see where I can, um, someone put earlier the Chia Pence, the Syngonium, um, S it's, um, not wild, um, look, looks like they typed it in there for you. So, and then I also took a picture. Yes. Take a screenshot of that. Cause it's really a great one. And then the Philodendron Micans is my favorite plant right now. Oh, that's good. I like that. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know. Philodendron, I have one hanging right there. I'm, I'm so neglectful with the Philodendron Micans. I don't know what it is. I mean, I love them. I appreciate them. And I really wanted one when I first um, laid my eyes on Micans. But I just don't, I don't know what it is. I, I have a tendency to neglect the Micans. And it's so bad. But they're beautiful, though. They're very, very pretty. And they're very easy to grow. So, um, but yeah, the variegated ones, oh, they are beautiful. I like Blanche from the Golden Girls. Share with me. <laughs> love me the neon green. Yes. I love just the, the like, pops of color here and there that I love that and I like a little art thrown in there for color um it's a lot of fun for me and then my Philo Neon is on a moss pole living her best life oh that's good and you know um it's I so no oh man speaking of the neon forgot about that one that one has been down there and I haven't even been looking at it but I, I want to end up putting actually that one right now I'm just like hey it looks pretty I love the neon green ones because there's just something about it that just I don't know. There's just something about them. I think it's just the variation of colors. But I do want to end up putting this one on a moss pole. But you know what's funny? It is really happy right there. And so I may leave it alone. But I do want to do that. Maybe I'll just take a propagation from that. So, all right. Well, I'm going to um, go ahead and I'm going to sign off for a little bit, guys. Because I'm going to actually try to do a little bit of watering. If you guys can think of like some kind of, um, yes. Well, this is the ring of fire right here. Um, so somebody just asked, Christina, was that a ring of fire in the corner? Um, yeah, I, I definitely, the neon color plants, they just make me happy. But this is, um, this didn't have, it kind of had kind of just the whatever leaves down there and then it popped out one. It was amazing. I do have also a golden crocodile. Let's just show you here. Another neon one, by the way. And this one is super happy so far and really easy to care for. And I'm like, is that for real? Is that for real? I almost thought something was, I was like, man, maybe something's wrong with this, this leaf, but no, that's just the color. That's just the color of it. So it's really pretty. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, definitely, um, the golden crocodile, 
Um, it's really pretty. And then, yeah, I, I really like adding kind of variations. I think um, last night, I don't know, I just put this, um, this um, Gloriosum was not doing the best. And so I decided I had someone talked about uh, taking like a long planner because it's a crawler and putting it in that so I'm going to see what it does and then if it doesn't like it I'll take it out but it wasn't very happy um so we'll see we'll see if it perks up and then I have a silver mommy right there that I put in there as well so we'll see but well I'm going to sign off guys you guys have a good night it's been nice talking with all of you and I will probably be back on maybe tomorrow night so and you have my years number that's oh that's good that's good to know not wild um yeah i i'm i'm hoping it will work because it's i read something and it looks like a crawler but like sometimes it's hard to tell in some of them but um but yeah i'm, I'm excited to see what it will do so thank you guys all right signing off see you guys later